Hello and welcome to Identify Missing IDs and Sequence Gaps. My name is Jeff. I'm glad you're here. Let's just get started here. The idea is we have a, um, you know, a list of transactions and one of the columns is some type of ID column. Um, you know, that's sequential. In this case, it's check num. Maybe it's, I don't know, invoice num or, you know, invoice ID, something like that. But, but the point is we have this ID number column and our job during this review is to find the missing check nums, find the gaps in the sequence. Um, if this was a one-time project, you know, and maybe this is a short list, um, we might just do this manually. You know, and in practice, if, if I was only going to ever update this one time, this might be the exact way we would do it. We would do something like, you know, sort and, and scan, or maybe write a formula that computes, you know, the check num minus the row above, and if it's equal to one, then we know we've, you know, are good. If it's more than one, we know there's a gap or something along these lines. Maybe we apply a filter or conditional formatting to identify those. Um, if this was a one-time project, short list, hey, let's just knock it out and move on with our life. But if this is a recurring use kind of a task, uh, and maybe, you know, instead of having 20 items, there's 20,000 items, um, we're going to put Power Query to work here so that we can... Uh, just refresh uh, every period instead of doing any manual steps. So this is this is the process. First, we have to load this into Power Query. How do we do that? We just go to Data from Table Range. Okay, this is going to load us uh, a preview of the data into Power Query Editor, and this actually looks pretty good just the way that it is. So I'm going to uh, just leave this table one. We could give it a more descriptive name if we wanted to. Um, and then I'm going to close and load two, and I'm just going to create a connection only query and click OK. Um, and at this point, we have the connection only query here called table one, and it's, it's basically you know a copy of this table. Um, and now we need to do the next step, which is to create a list of all of the check nums between the minimum and maximum check nums in this column. And so this can be three steps. Step one is to find the min. Step two is to find the max. Step three is to find the range. So here's what we're going to do. Right click and select reference. And this basically uses the results of the table one query as the starting point for this new query. And what we want to do is find the min check num. So we select check num, go to transform, go to statistics and minimum. All right, and this finds the minimum and returns the value. 1212 looks good. Um, we're just going to give this a name. I'm going to call this um, ID min, and I'm going to close and load two, and I'm going to create a connection only query and click OK. And we basically do the same thing for the ID max. Right click, reference. I'm going to give this a name here called ID max, and I'm going to select check num, transform statistics maximum. Close and load two, connection only query, click OK. And now we need to create a list that has all of the check nums between the min and the max. So what we'll do is go to data, get data from other sources, new blank query. And at this point, all we have to do is type in equals and then an open curly brace and then the exact name of our ID min query, case sensitive, two dots. ID max, close curly brace. What? Yeah, check this out. Enter. <laughs> there we go. Okay, these curly braces tell Excel to create a range, a list, from the starting point to the ending point, which happens to be dynamically computed because they're queries, ID min, ID max. Um, and, and now to use this list in our next step, we're going to convert this to a table. So we just click this to table, uh, and we got it. And we just click through that. That looks fine. I'm going to call this ID range. And we're just going to close and load this to a connection only query. All right. Now we have table one, which is a copy of this. We have ID range, which is a list of all of the check nums between the min max. And now all we have to do is merge them. So we go to data, get data, combine queries, merge. And at this point, we need to pick our two queries. First of all, it's ID range. Second of all, it's table one. The common or shared column uh, or like lookup column, if you're thinking about it like that, would be 
column one and check num. So we just pick those. And now we have to select a join kind. And there's lots of options. In this case, we want what's called a la left anti. What is that? It means I only want rows that appear in the first. In other words, rows only in the first. In other words, I want any numbers that appear in this first table and not in the second table. And there's other choices depending on the project that you're working on. But in this case, that's exactly what we want. These are the missing IDs. So we click OK. And at this point, we're pretty much done. These are all of the checks that are missing from our original data source. So we don't need this table one, so I'm just going to remove that. And I'm going to close and load this too. And here I'm just going to say send it to a table in a new worksheet and OK. And at this point, we got it. Yeah, that's a list of the gaps, the missing IDs. We save, close, move on with our life. Life is good. And now next period, uh, maybe there's a new CSV export. You know, maybe instead of getting the data range from a table, maybe we had uh, used, you know, from, from a file or from a database. Anyway, uh, next period, we don't have to go through these steps again. Um, all we have to do is right click and refresh. And Excel will execute all of those queries and send us a list of the missing IDs. Okay, so it makes our, our investment of time pay off every subsequent period. All right. Hey, hope it helps. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University.